Hey, good evening and welcome to our Leader Launch 2020. Uh, we're glad to have you guys this evening on probably what for many of you is a very busy night. So thanks for being with us. Uh, my name is Darren Russo and I serve at the Fort Mill campus. My name is Quinlan Lee and I serve with the discipleship team here at Forest Hill Church. Yeah, and we're excited to be with you guys tonight to give you some insight into the direction that we're going with groups. Now, the last five to six months has certainly been an interesting and unusual time uh, for our country and certainly for our church body as well. And in the midst of it being a challenge and being limited to uh, being able to meet in person, folks have felt really disconnected in some ways. But what's been unique over the last five to six months is that we've literally had 3,000 yeah. plus folks that call Forest Hill home that have continued to meet via their groups. They've met online via Zoom. Some folks have actually been meeting out in parking lots or at different parks. One men's group I know, they just break out their camping chairs and meet in somebody's backyard, which is really cool, but that's a glimpse of what God is doing. So we realize that groups play a significant role, not only in the life of Forest Hill, but also God's mission. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting ready to enter into a new season of groups here at Forest Hill Church. And they're gonna be a big part as we walk forward in our mission to build bridges to connect everyone to dynamic life in Christ. So tonight we have Jonathan Scott from the, a campus pastor and also a teaching pastor, as well as Jason Smith, our lead pastor for direction. And they're gonna share with us the way groups have been an important part of where Forest Hill has been for the last many years and really where we're going. They're gonna help us inspire and look to the future and how groups are going to help us build bridges. So we're going to be here together till about eight o'clock tonight. Jonathan and Jason are going to join us now and then you'll come back to Darren and I and we'll help link you up with your campus staff. Yeah, so right now it's my privilege to turn your attention to Jonathan Scott and uh, we'll see you guys back here in a few minutes. Well, and I actually came to Forest Hill after Life Groups got started, but that was actually one of the most exciting things about the attraction for me to Forest Hill was on their focus on Life Groups. Um, it really was a part of the vision of David Chadwick in that particular era, uh, era. And what was said was, is that he believed that a church didn't need to be a place where people sit in rows, but in circles. And so moving away from some of the more institutional forms of kind of life, uh, people getting together to life groups where people are sitting, whether it's in a living room, a coffee shop, the idea there was to get people engaged in meaningful community. And uh, com some of the priorities of that were that we really wanted to make sure that people had a chance of being able to grow spiritually, to grow deeply. Uh, we wanted to make sure that people cared for one another, that they actually loved one another. They had a chance of being able to do, to do the one another's in the community, but also, uh, or rather in community, but also we wanted to make sure that people understood the value of serving together. You know, there's just something that happens when you're studying together, when you're caring for one another, and you're serving the community together, it creates a different dynamic of spiritual growth within a biblical community. Um, a lot of wonderful things took place. I believe that that was uh, a part of the attraction for a lot of people coming to Forest Hill Church at that particular point. Uh, some very deep friendships were forged over a long period of time that people were in these groups. Um, and so there's been um, different levels of effectiveness, both in the community, beyond the group and inside, some experiencing great success, some not so, but that's part of the nature of what it is to be a part of the church. It's not a perfect organism, but at least the model was set that we really wanted people not only just to attend the large gathering worship services every week, but to find themselves in biblical community where they're learning to care for one another, grow in spiritual depth, and serve the community. Okay, um, so what I think is good, as we mentioned before, is the sense of community. Um, my late wife and I, when we got to Forest Hill, we started a life group probably about six months after we got into it, and we had a life group for six years. You know, and a, a variety of different people came in and out. But it was really neat um, to be a part of the church and being able to grow with people over that long period of time where there were some really deep friendships. I've known groups that were together for 10, 15 years, you know, a long period of time. So the continuity of relationships, I think, has been really good. We've also experienced where there have been uh, many people have come into the church through life groups even before they would come to a service you know, a worship experience. Uh, and then other groups that would actually expand, they would have so many people and then they would divide and split. So now you have two really healthy groups and they just continue to multiply that way so that the opening and opportunity for involvement, for belonging, for connection continue to expand. 
What's taken place over the last few years is, especially as our understanding of what discipleship really should be, spiritual transformation really needs to be, is we've realized that over time, the groups seem to become somewhat more um, internally focused. Even with our life group connections, sometimes uh, you know, groups would come like, who's gonna join our group, rather than who's in my life? that may be, may be a part of that. So a lot of internal focus, I think, in some cases, for some of the groups, it became um, more uh, cliquish in the sense that, hey, this is our group, us four no more, kind of a, kind of a thing, um, without an opening to those in our community beyond those groups that re really may need the same thing we needed when we started to join a group. And also, I think um, some of the, the biblical foundations, um, that kind of got, be, be became diminished somewhat as people uh, maybe studied a variety of different things and we may have left just the simple foundational mooring of, okay, what does God say and how do we interact with scripture ourselves? And so those are some of the things in addition to just some of the natural dynamics of what happens with people that spend time together and you're not exactly sure how to be able to um, care properly or deal with some of the dysfunctions that can come from people who are coming from a variety of different places. It's not a perfect, or, it's not a perfect uh, arrangement, but it's not intended to be. It's intended to be a place where people can learn how to love, but also how to be able to grow with one another. And so I would say, especially I have kind of where we want to be able to head, and we'll talk about that in a second, how do we want to be poised in a way that reaches the people who are in places of division, right? Now we understand in our culture, there's a lot of um, division over creed, over color, over ethnicity, over political parties, over denominationalism, over translations of just all kinds of different um, different divisions. And we want to be the kind of people who build bridges to people who aren't here. You know, uh, we definitely want to make, make make sure that this is a place where those who are already committed can continue, can continue to grow. But the essence of the Christian mission is not simply just a concern for our personal growth, but the growth of people who aren't here yet. And so we want to be a place that is not just concerned about who comes through the door, but those who aren't even looking at the, bu at the building, but those people that we have regular relationships with, that we are in connection with, in some um, maybe more casual, but still significant ways, and to be looking for how can our life, how can our church have an impact on those who are out there though they may not for a while if ever come in here how can we be effective out there and we believe that it's more effective to do that in that environment in the neighborhood in the community rather than asking people to come to the building or the, the, the once a week environment Well, I'll also say that, you know, even after um, we stopped doing a group, um, there was always still, still, still something in me, and so uh, I wanted to be able to have that connection, so I started a couple guys groups, you know. And what was really neat about it was guys that I just happened to come in contact with. I would hear a little, hear a little of their story and say, well, hey, do you want to you be a part of a group? And, and we did, and I am right now in a group of guys that started with me several years ago and the depth of our relationship has been increasing. But even for us, we have been dealing with, okay, but who else? We've been given this gift of intimacy, of biblical depth. We need to be looking for who else in our life needs what we needed and to be more generous in opening up to that prospect, so. So excitement is an interesting word because excitement also may speak of where are you a little bit nervous, you know, because excitement is about also extending beyond our comfort zone. What excites me about where we're going as bridge builders is being intentional in looking beyond ourselves to the people we cross paths with every day. One of the challenges for, um, for this church, for this mission before the end of the year, is to have a kingdom conversation with somebody before the end of the year. That creates a certain intentionality, you know. But here's the thing. Once you have that kingdom, kingdom conversation and there seems to be openness, where do they go next, right? Yeah, you want to invite them to the weekend worship service, but people, especially right now because of all the divisions, they really are looking for a community. So what excites me about this is that life groups, moving towards bridge groups in light of our vision, we are going to be more intentional, not just in spiritual growth for ourselves, but building bridges to people who are not here. I think hopefully it will put all of us more on alert 
for God. Who are you bringing across my, uh, my, the, in my sphere of influence? Who, who are you intersecting my path with that's not simply there to give me a particular secular service, but where there can be a spiritual kingdom relationship and how to invite them to be a part of, of a community that's moving in the same direction? How do we live out our Christian calling in a way that lets people out there know that they matter? And not just because we want their attendance and their service, but we want to be a part of walking alongside. We begin the process of trying to um, eliminate, bring down the barriers that keep people separate and find our commonality, our purpose, our identity together in the presence of Christ, which is what I believe uh, bridge groups. Still going to be even more biblically focused. Um, we still want people to be able to care deeply for one another, but the other aspect that's different is that now peep the groups will be more intentionally focused on who can we reach, who can we include. And I hope that people will think from the perspective of what you were like when you were excluded, what you were like when you didn't have Christ. And now that you're a part of that, there should be a hungering and a longing to see that experienced by other folks who were, who are where we were. So what excites me is how the church will grow intentionally as people position themselves intentionally, both within their group, but, their, but also their personal life. The people that live right next door to you, people in the next cubicle, the people you do groceries with, you know, that as God opens those doors that we're praying more intentionally about that sensitivity and crossing those barriers, those lines, to be able just to even have a, a conversation of, a, of a friendship and to invite people. Um, this is many years ago in, in another church. I remember in one particular group, there was a, a, a woman who wanted to join this discipleship group, and she wasn't a Christian. And she called us and said, hey, I'm not a Christian. Is it okay if I join this discipleship group? And we were like, holy smokes, what better environment for her to learn about what it means to follow Christ than that? There was that kind of interest, and she, she became a part of the group, and it enriched both her life and the group's life as well. The beauty of being able to be in a room with people who are not at your same spiritual level for me, even people who aren't even Christians yet, <laughs> there's an excitement that enables me to appreciate the depth of my faith, even as I'm sharing the truth and the love. Actually, that's a mutual kind of a thing. We're, it's, we're both sharing with Christ as the main entree, if you will, that he is nourishing all of us as we seek to pursue and follow him and love one another as he has loved us. So my hope in all of this, as um, a person privileged to be a pastor and leader and a member of Forest Hill Church, is my hope and desire for all those that are listening, those who even now may be sensing that Christ may be calling them to more, um, that we would take the next couple of months to intentionally pray and ask simply the question, Jesus, where do you want me? How do you want me to be even more effective as your partner in kingdom ministry? To imagine what would happen if all of us were all in following Christ to accomplish this major objective, which is no longer simply just looking only at the people that are in the circle, but looking at the harvest that is ready, the people that are out there right now, especially because of what's going on with the coronavirus and all of the other troubles we've got. There are people, they are ripe, they are open, and we can no longer afford to just simply look at what's going on in our body, but in the world where um, these bridge groups really will become more intentional in building bridges that will connect people to dynamic life, the kind of life that we found, the kind of life that we're continuing to explore. One of the things that we can also guarantee is that uh, one of the things, again, that attracted me to Forest Hill was their commitment to leadership development. We're going to make sure that those who decide to step in and say, we want to be a part of what God is doing through this mission and vision, um, we want to make sure that they are equipped to be able to succeed. We want people to succeed. And so that is a, that is a given. That's a guarantee of us being able to do that. And, and for people to understand, this is not simply getting people to uh, be recruited to Force Hill's mission and vision. It's more than that. We believe that the mission and vision reflects the Great Commission. It reflects the Great Commandment. It reflects the purpose and the passion that Jesus has. That's why it's important. Pray. Ask Christ to reveal to you and to your heart what he is calling you to do. That's my hope and my prayer for all of us as co-laborers together, um, and that we'll find a more powerful sense of community, a powerful sense of purpose, 
a powerful sense of mission as together we follow Christ in reaching a world he died to save and lives to see saved and transformed. And the, mission, and the, mir the miracle, <laughs> it's through us. It's through us. So pray. And then after Christ has revealed to you what he desires to do, jump in. Everybody in. And let's accomplish this impossible mandate through the God who makes all things possible for his glory and his kingdom good in a world that we live in and I hope love. Hey leaders, I just wanna say thank you so much for your willingness, your faithfulness, your obedience to step out and be a part of this mission that we have to build bridges that connect everyone to dynamic life in Christ and by being a part of leading a bridge group. This is an exciting time for us. You're gonna get a chance to experience not just the discipleship, the deep connection and community that life groups provided as well, but also this shift towards making sure we are keeping an open chair ready for somebody who is disconnected from God disconnected from the dynamic life that you and I have experienced, that we found and fell in love with as we follow Jesus, you're gonna get a chance to create that opportunity and watch people come alive in faith. It's one of the most exciting things to do, and I know that you're up for it. And this is it, all of us are gonna to have to be a part of this mission that God has placed us in. And what a better time than right now. As you look around the world, as you look around our country and our culture, man, people need the truth, the hope, and the power of the gospel. And so we're excited to begin these bridge groups to help folks find it in a new and accessible way. It reminds me of when I was in my very first life group here at Forest Hill Church. Jessica and I were a part of one, and we ended up going on to, to lead one after that. But in our first one, we had this group of people who came from every possible angle, with every perspective on Jesus and Christianity you could imagine. From homeschool and private school, to Sunday school, to those who were actually like Amy and Eric, some friends of mine, who were agnostics. Um, Eric actually was an atheist. He was doing his fellowship here in Charlotte as an orthopedic surgeon. And over the course of a year, we got to walk with and watch Eric wake up to the truth of God's love in Christ. And uh, that happened only because the leader of that group was somebody who made clear we were gonna keep a welcoming environment. We certainly all grew in our individual pursuit of God and depth of discipleship. But at the end of the day, Eric came to faith. And now there is a legacy through his children, his grandchildren, and who knows how far of this new life that was born in him because of what happened to that group. That's possible for you. I'm convinced many of you are going to not only be a part of it, you're going to lead people right to it. And I can't wait for you to experience that joy. God's got great plans for Forest Hill Church through your leadership and through Bridge Groups. And I can't wait to see you on the other side of the journey. Let's get together and talk about and celebrate everything that he's doing as you step out in faith in this way. Thank you again for the way that you lead this church. So what does all this mean now? I'm sure you have questions. Hopefully you're excited, but you may also be wondering, what is this going to mean for my current life group? Where do we go from here? So we've set up a time for you to be able to ask these questions and talk through next steps with your campus discipleship staff. If you look over in the chat right now or check your email, you've gotten a Zoom link where you'll be able to connect and ask those questions, pray together, and look towards the future of groups. Yep. So listen, we want to thank uh, Jonathan and uh, Jason for being a part of tonight. It certainly has been fun just getting a chance to been connect great. with you. And, uh, but certainly want to make sure that you guys know that we appreciate your leadership. It's your leadership that makes a difference in these groups as we continue to move forward with bridge groups. What I want to conclude with is simply a passage out of 2 Corinthians that reiterates the significance of how God uses you and your role to connect people to dynamic life in Christ. Paul writes this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Thanks for joining us this evening. And again, make sure that you click the link below to get you to uh, your right chat room. Thanks, have a good night.